Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to wait till some of you get on. Praise God, praise God. Hello, everyone. Praise God. I hope that you are having, I pray in the hoping, I pray that you're having a blessed night. Come on, somebody, give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. Come on, somebody. Okay, let me go ahead and get straight into it. Um, I My title is Part 2, Demonic Activity, but subtitle is why are you attracted to demons? It's because you still have an open door, and I'm going to get straight into it. Okay, you, you know um, how you see someone, and you say, oh, my God, they're fine. Or let's go even deeper, an abuser. Um, there are so many people that they actually have toxic relationships. We're not just talking about intimate relationships, family, friendships. And you keep attracting the same type of people. You ever wonder what that was? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I I'm going to go in tonight. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And remember, everything is spiritual. So that's why deliverance is so, so, so pivotal in any part of a Christian's life. You have to be delivered. Now, hold on, because I'm about to school you tonight, for real. Deliverance is not just a one-time thing. Come on, somebody, share this tag. Come on, somebody, because I feel the power of God. I've been feeling them all day. Hallelujah. Deliverance is a process until the day you die. That's why he says, get in that word. That's why Joshua 8 says, meditate day and night, and then you will make your way successful. Then you're going to be delivered. Then you're going to be healed. You ain't going to deal with that stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're not going to deal with generational curses. Doors of um, demonic activity being opened in your life. It's not just generational curses. It's about the choices you make. So let's, let's go on. You ever been around people that are toxic and they can't help it? I mean, they think negative, they talk negative, they everything is just negative, negative, negative. And then guess what? It's ironic because they get with somebody negative. You know, birds of a feather do flock together. You can say what you want to say. Yes, they do. Because of the fact, let me tell you what's happening. You have never been truly healed and delivered. Oh, I'm about to go in tonight. Let me tell y'all something. The reason why the church haven't, haven't seen miracle signs and wonders is because we as a group, as a whole, have not been thoroughly delivered. Let me tell you something. Going to church don't make you deliver. Going to church don't make you healed. Going to church don't make you saved. Or you can go to church all day long. I know lots of people, they've been gone 30, 40 years and I cuss you out. I fight you too. I cut you too. Especially from Louisiana. Oh, you think it's a game? I'm not playing. Because you were never truly healed and delivered. It's a process. It's a process of getting in your word. It's a process of getting closer to God. It's a process of being, uh, I'm talking about like having those intimate conversions. That's what I'm going to call them, intimate conversions. What is an intimate conversion? Processing. God, I came to church. Okay, God, I got healed. Now teach me how to be delivered. And the reason why the church is not seeing a high rate of deliverance is because the head, if the head is sick, the body is sicker. Somebody write that in the comments. If the head is sick, the body is sicker. So we have heads, bishops, apostles, pastors, preachers. I'm talking about famous ones too. It don't matter. It ain't, I'm not talking about just local people. Honey, they have not been thoroughly healed and delivered. How do you know? I'm about to walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm about to walk heavy up in here. I remember. I think the first time I truly felt the anointing of God walking in a church was at Calvary Christian Center, where I really got my training under Pastor Philip Goodell in Sacramento. He has about 12 churches now. Let me tell you something. I didn't know what the anointing was. I didn't. I had always been to church. I was 27. Now, I think I went to him like I was about, what, 32, 33, something like that. Hey, isn't that something? Same age as Jesus, 33. And I remember when I first walked in, and the crazy part is, oh, man, I got to, you know what? <laughs> the stories, the stories. But I guess it goes to show you that's what God wants me to do. Everything is a story, right? And, and the thing is, it's true. God made me remember how I got there. And again, this is part of healing and deliverance because I was going to just go on in it. But I think he made me tell you all my stories because they're your stories. Oh, come on, somebody talk, talk with me and walk with me. I was dating somebody that went there and I'm going to keep it 100 like I always do. 
and I don't have to say any names. I'm just sure he don't want me to anyway. <laughs> and um, he had a janitorial service and I ended up working for him. Long story short, I was, remember, I was still doing my thing. As a matter of fact, we were fornicating together. And I never forget what that man told me. My God, my God, my God, my story is real, y'all. I ought to do a movie. <laughs> One day, um, he said, he woke up and he said, I can't mess with you no more. And I got offended. What you mean? We've been doing what we've been doing, and all of a sudden you don't want what you doing, playing games? You know, I took it offensive. And I never forget what he said. He said, Deanna, God showed me who you are. No, who you are going to be. And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't where I messed up. I was like, this he playing the game. He playing, we y'all know. So he was so adamant. Now, I will say this. I could see the seriousness in his eyes, but I was like, oh, I'm not hearing that right now. I wasn't ready to be truly into it, right? And I never forget what happened. He kept on me and on me. He said, come to church with me. And I was like, you know, I'm thinking if I go to church, it's going to all be good again. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't like you don't know what I'm saying here. So he got me to go to church on a Sunday. I never forget. And honestly, I'm asking for that tape because I would love for y'all to hear the tape of all that weight. I think it'd be very powerful for y'all to hear. So I never forget. Um, it was 2000, about two or three. Might have been four. OK, I, I really don't know that year. So don't don't hold me to that. I'm going to find out for y'all. So anyway, we went. And I'm just sitting up there and I'm like, I can't wait. I'm just sitting up there like, I hope, I hope this hurry up and get over with. Y'all know it's the truth, especially if you're just going for because somebody asked you to go. And I never forget at the end of the service, Pastor Philip Godot said, I can't close the service. And I'm looking at this man like, I wish you closed it. I'm trying to go. I got stuff to do. I had nothing to do, but you know how it is. And he said, there's somebody in this in this building that God keeps talking to me. And he says, he won't let me close the service because he's time for you to stop playing. Right then and now, I knew it was me. I started shaking. I said, now, I know the church was full because he has a two-story church. I said, I know they're tripping. I, and I started shaking. And I said, about 10 minutes into him going around and around and around saying he was saying, the guy looked at me and said, you know, it's you, huh? And I said, you know what? I felt like they set me up. I said, you know what? I don't know what kind of game y'all got going on in this church. But I'm finna get up, but I couldn't move. And then I started shaking almost to the literally of crying. The Holy Ghost fell on me. I didn't even know what the Holy Ghost was, to tell y'all the truth. Fell on me. And I said, okay, I'm going to get up. I went up there. Pastor Godot said, thank you. He said, give me one year, and I'm going to teach you how to walk this walk, talk this talk, and be a woman of God. And for that, I don't care what nobody say. And a lot of things have happened. I will always be indebted to Pastor Philip G. Godot. Because he did that. He took me under his wing, not personally, so let, let's get it clear, but his teachings. And despite of how people came against me, and so many people came, it, it was crazy. I ain't even gonna lie, y'all. There was so much that happened that I'm not gonna talk about. And so that's how I truly began to get serious. Because I, I, I remember I was ordained when I was 27, but in man in Louisiana, but this is when I became serious. So that's how I came to the church, just to let y'all know. And it was a process. I was still had that stuff in me. I, I would, you know, I mean, I was still doing, you know, don't have like y'all know what I'm saying. And I told y'all how one night God kept me up. I told y'all last video how God kept me up. And, and so it's a process. And I had to be healed. Okay. No more fornicating. No more doing this. That was a process. No more drinking. No more cussing. Then I want to fight somebody in the foyer. Oh, yeah, I was about to knock her completely out. I sure was. Somebody caught my hand and said, you're not a thug. Stop that. I'm just being real. I still had that stuff in me. And so these women, there was three women that took me under their wing as well. And they taught me how to be a woman of God. They talk with me. They walk with me. They corrected me. Come on, somebody. I just said something because some of y'all don't want nobody to tell you nothing. You could be anointed all day. But if you don't have the character, it will take you under. The anointing is a two-edged sword. That's real. I had the anointing. I had it when I was 27. Heck, I had it when I was 16. Heck, I heard it when I first heard God at 12. But I did not have the character. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing. So I kept meeting people that had the same character. So in church, meeting fornicators. In church, meeting liars. In church, oh, oh y'all thought because you went to church that there's not fornicators and liars. Oh, my bad. Yes, there are. 
because everybody's processing. So you have at least five different groups in church. You have your season. You have your want to be season because they've been gone, but they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they just ain't. The season, they real. They sit so quiet and be peeping everything. Oh, come on, somebody walk with me. Y'all know it's true. Then you have you want to be seasoned. That's the ones that been there 30, 40. They, they really don't have it, but hey, they've been there. So you, you just, God bless them. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Then you have your, your, your babes. You have your babes. That's the ones that they came to Christ, but they really don't know. I don't know if I want to live this life yet because they, this kind of hard. Okay, what I'm saying? Then you have your group that they just there for. Oh, this one fine, that one fine. Well, I'm going to use this to, to do my business. This is prosperous here. A lot of people got money. A lot of people got business. Oh, uh, Come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing out tonight. That's the group she got. And you got one more group. And that's the group you better stay away from. These are the evil ones. The Oh, y'all didn't know that. The devil sends agents to churches. I need you to trip them up. I need you to sleep with as many women, both men and women. Some of them are angels, are demons, and some of them are people that have a demonic, um, a, a demonic spirit. Point blank in the story. That's why there's so much demonic activity. That's your five groups of people that's in church. So that's why I don't get down with this new thing. And no disrespect to y'all, pastors and preachers and teachers. Say, uh, hug your neighbor. Do you know what? If that neighbor is a demon, that neighbor better not hug me. I don't get down with that new age stuff. I'm not saying don't hug people. I'm not saying don't be friendly to people. But I'm not hugging no demon. Because I don't know what's going to get attached to me. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. That's why we're not seeing people healed and delivered. So so, so let, let's walk this thing out. Because what I'm talking about is. Why are you attracted to demons? It's because you still have an open door. You're still dirty. So let's talk about getting cleansed. So apostle, how do I do this? As I said, when I first started, Joshua 1, 8 says, meditate in this book. My Bible is way over there. Day and night. And then you will make your way a great success. He said, make. That lets you know you're going to have opposition. Opposition. Opposition, said God. You got to get in that word. You got to get under somebody. Let me tell you something. I don't want y'all to think I've been a renaissance. I've been under people since the age of 27. God called me out the church in, when was it God? 2015. I love, I was under Bishop Loveless in Sacramento, California. So don't ever think I just came up on Facebook. I have been under people. As a matter of fact, I've been on boards. I've been um, associate pastor of churches. Yes. So don't think I just came on Facebook and I'm, no, no, baby. I got all my paperwork. I'm a chaplain. I'm a reverend. I have my certified papers as an apostle, prophetic, everything. Been to Bible college, in case you didn't know, if you thought I just popped up on Facebook and doing this. I've been true to this, but it's been a process. So let's talk about why you are attracted to demons. That's because that stuff's still in you. Why she like a roughneck? Or why she like drug dealers? Or why he like a, a, a can I say it? It's in the Bible, a whore. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Bible. Because he's not delivered. Because she's not delivered. Because anytime you are truly healed and delivered, you don't want that stuff no more. You can't talk like that no more. You can't walk like that no more. You can't operate like that. That's it right there. That's how we know what you're doing. And can I tell you something? Sin. Have you ever seen somebody that has like a dark countenance? Sin is written over you. Just like you see somebody, you know this pure men and women of God, their skin is so beautiful. It shines. You remember how Moses' face shined that they had to cover it with something? Because that's the anointing of God. So whenever you touch the unclean thing, it darkens your countenance. So why are you attracted to demons? Why are you attracted to demons? Because two to one, you're probably still working with demonic activity. Whether, oh, I'm, I got to go in tonight. I'm sorry, you guys. Whether you're masturbating, whether you're fornicating, whether you are porn and porn, whether you're doing phone calls with porn, sexual talk, all that stuff open doors, even through the internet. 
I'm about to go in. God going to get you men and women of God that come on here provocative. I see y'all. And ain't nobody hating on y'all because I, I pray for y'all. Y'all be looking so provocative. And my thing is, how can you even play like that and teach the word of God looking provocative? Because, honey, they're not listening to you. They're looking at you talking about and what they're thinking about. That's still a spirit, says God. That's still a spirit. Now, hold on, because we're not bashing people. We're talking about why are you still attracted to demons of all sorts? Because there's demons that are pastors and preachers and teachers. As a matter of fact, they know the word in and out, out and in. Some of them running churches. Whole crew, whole crew possessed. God wants to pull this onion, peel this onion backwards. Pull it, peel it. Because guess what? It's too much. It's too much demonic activity in his church. So it's time for people to expose it, to call it out, and to cast it out. I'm going to say those three again. Expose it, call it out, and cast it out. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But you can't do that unless you healed and delivered. You have so many people that are not healed and delivered. And remember, I told you deliverance is an ongoing process. I'm still being delivered. God, my thought. Keep me with the right thought, God. God, let me talk the right thing. Let me teach the right thing. Because even as a teacher, let me tell you something. And as a preacher, an apostle, I have to make sure that I stay in check. God, keep me. God, keep me. So that I deliver the pure word of God and not my opinion. Not something that's um common. Not something that's, um you know, like... um everybody's doing it. Every time a message come out, you know, there's a pastors, the message of grace came out. Everybody started talking about grace. I don't want to be that type of preacher and teacher. That's why I have a relationship with God. God speak to me. What do your people need to hear at this time? That's why it's so, it's so important to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not just a show because showtime is over said the Lord. Why are you attracted to demons? You have a door open. In this season, God say, close the door. I'm going to say it again. Close the door. I'm going to say it again. Close the door. How do you know? The first thing you need to do is go on a fast, God says. Fasting exposes every demonic work around you because let me tell you what fasting do. It, it actually kills the flesh. And so your spirit, man, is like a radar. You peep everything. It could be behind you. You'd be like, something's wrong. Hallelujah. Somebody asked me also. They asked me, they said, Apostle, how can you truly hear God? I have to be honest with y'all. The most time that I hear God, I hear God every day. But when it's crisp, clean, clear, is when I don't eat a whole lot like meat or when I eat fruits and vegetables. That's why Pastor Godot probably was a veg is, is a vegetarian. He still is. When you are a vegetarian, and I'm just keeping it real, a lot of people don't want to hear that because you're like your meat. You hear God so clear, it'll scare you. You hear conversations with people having about you. You'd be like, no, I ain't crazy. And, and you'd be wanting to go confirm. God said, no, I'm just letting you hear what they're saying. You, you shut up. I got this. That's how you hear. So many people have asked me, how do you hear? Fast. Man, when you fast, you are literally a radar. The spirit is over you. The spirit is in you. Literally watching you. Letting, letting you know what is this, what is that Letting you know the traps That's what's happening Anytime, let me tell you some more prophecy A lot of people don't understand what apostolic anointing and prophetic is We're not all that great If God don't download the information We don't know anything But you have to put yourself in position That's why the prophetic office right now is kind of messed up Because everybody trying to I'm just going to be with y'all Y'all playing with that gift That gift is nothing to play with Let me tell you something Even apostleship all of a sudden, everybody, I was listening to somebody. I'm not going to say his name. I the powerful man of God. And he said something. He said, everybody wants to, to walk in an office that God didn't call them to walk in. And it's the truth. Because here's the deal. If God didn't call you, here it goes. That demonic activity. You start having demonic activity that you can't handle because you weren't called. You weren't called to that office. And that's why a lot of people are going through it. I don't care what you say. You're supposed to really stay in your lane. 
Whatever God called you to, if he called you to be an apostle, if he called you to be a prophet, if he called you to be an evangelist, if he called you to be a minister, if he called you to be a teacher, if he called you to be a preacher, be who God have called you to be because ain't nobody could beat you being you. All this other stuff, it is it opens up demonic activity. You remember the seven sons of Sceva? Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? Those demons know who's powerful and who's not. And to be honest with you, that's your clue. If they messing with you, then you got something. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, because if they ain't messing with you, then they already got you. Or they, they, he, ain't, he ain't no powerful. She ain't powerful. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So let's talk about why you are attracted to demons. So many women of God. Let's go here. Attracted to men that are not saved. Why are you attracted to them? And hold on. I used to be too. Well, you know, God could save anybody. When I got married in 2012, like I told y'all, the first day, I honestly, honestly, before y'all, I heard God say, no, Deanna. But I thought, I love you, God. I have enough God in me, surely. And before that relationship was over, I heard God say, Deanna, he don't want me like you. <laughs> That's half it right there. Y'all trying to want somebody to want God the way you want him. I had, no, had, I had about four or five friends that were married to somebody that didn't match their calling. Y'all can't tell me nothing. I watched that. They went through it. And I ain't gonna lie. They still going through it today. Yeah, they've been together 30, 40 years. But they act like they hate each other. I ask God, don't ever let me be that way. And I'm not trying to bash nobody. I'm not trying to talk about nobody. If I got to look at you, and we got to go round and round every day of our lives. You are not the husband for me. Hallelujah. And I don't care how much love. Oh, there you go. I don't care how much love. I'm about to go ahead. Good sex, bank accounts, this, this will be God. If you are not truly called and we are ordained by God, there is no way you could sustain the anointing on my life. As a matter of fact, what's going to happen is you're going to take the anointing on my life. And guess what? You're going to pull me from God. And then we're going to both be in trouble. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me tonight. That's why most people are attracted to demons because you were never healed and delivered. So let's talk about how you get healed and delivered. First of all, at minutes and surrender. Father God, I'm dirty. You know what I do, how I do it. The first thing you're going to tell you to do is to start being obedient in everything. And partial obedience is still disobedience. If God tell you to do something, you got to do it. You got to get in your word like never before. People don't want their word no more. As a matter of fact, it's the great falling away. People want to do what they want to do and get mad if you say something. Get mad if you correct. Get mad if you say something. Hallelujah. For you got to fast. I know people don't like to fast. You have to. You, we used to have a saying, if you don't fast, you will not last. Y'all don't see how wretched it's getting out here? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. It's getting real, real. It's getting real, real out here, huh? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So God, he told me to talk about this tonight. He said, why are they attracted to demons? Why aren't you attracted to a man of God? Oh, he not fun. Oh, he not cool. Oh, he not this. Oh, he can't do that. That's because you still tainted my sister and my brother. It's, it's, hold on. It's men of God too. Y'all go after these girls. Y'all know that's not saved. Well, you know, she fine or this or that. Because you cannot understand spiritual because you haven't been in the spirit. God is calling the body of Christ up. I need you to, to get out the flesh. I need you to walk more in the spirit. Well, who can do that? Everybody. But in order to do this, you got to do those four things I told you. Obedience. No, surrender first. Obedience. Read that word of God. Let me tell y'all something. Even if you don't want to read, let me tell you how, how I do it sometimes. I go to my phone and I get um, audio. King James audio. If I'm cooking or I'm doing something and I get to James, I get to Timothy. Always having that word go in. Always having that word go in. What happened, it truly is the water. I understand why he call it the water. It cleanses. It cleanses sin out. And then you start thinking like God. You want to be more like God. You want to receive from God. So it's a cleansing thing. So the reason why you're still attracted to demons is because you haven't been cleansed, my sister, my brother. 
Come on, somebody, hallelujah. It's not to bash anybody. It's just the truth. So you got you to do those four things. And you can do it. Will it be easy? No. Seems like when you really want to live for God, everybody and their mama, Big Booty Judy will call you uh, my brother. And um, Slick Rick will call you my sister. I'm talking about Slick Rick ain't called for five years. But soon as you get serious, Slick Rick talking about, what you doing, baby? And you be like, <laughs> and that's me to get you. <laughs> right there and there. Don't act like I've been there. You can't tell me nothing. Been there. Did it. Wrote the book. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <sighs> my God, my God. We got to get back to God. And the reason why God wanted me to talk about these things is next year, <laughs> y'all just don't know. Y'all thought this year was something. It's going to be, it's going to be, oh my God. The enemy thinks to exact the bonus. The enemy thinks to wear the saints out. We're in the times of Daniel. We in the last days, y'all know that. And God said, my people got to come up. They got to come up, Deanna. They got to come up. They got to stop touching the unclean thing. There it is right there. There it is right there. It's a process. It's a process. We got a church that's unchurched. And God said, it has to change. He said, it has to change. He said, it has to change. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to get up on here. Oh, my God. I feel the power of God. I just wanted to get up on here and be obedient to God. We got We all got to do better, and we can. Notice I put myself in there. We, like I say, deliverance is an ongoing thing. Like I'm getting ready to teach the prophetic classes again. Those classes are not just prophetic, just to let you know. I, I focus on the prophetic, but those classes are for anybody that is, we, we, we real in those classes. Don't come in here playing because I, I will ask you to leave. Vamos. I'm not playing. Those are life-changing. And I honestly, they change me. So I like when I do them. I just don't do them a lot because the warfare is extreme. They don't like when I do those classes. You understand what I'm saying? Process, process, process. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let me pray. Let me pray. I thought I had my aura. I usually have it close by, but I got some on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, God. Because you're God, all by yourself. Hallelujah to his name. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters, Father God. First of all, I say that those that are not saved, that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord, right where you at, you ain't got to go to no church. Yeah, I said it. You ain't got to go to no church. You ain't got to go to no altar. You can say it right there where you at. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose the third day. I believe he sits at the right hand with the Father. Hallelujah. Please be Lord over my life. Come into my heart. Create a clean me. Change my mind. Change my body. Change my soul, God. Change me, God. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. If you say that prayer, then guess what? Jesus Christ will come and be your Lord. And then the second thing I don't hear people say all the time. After you do that, Father God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because that's what's going to keep you saved. People don't understand why people come and go and they go in and out because you ask God to save you, but you didn't ask God to fill you. You got to ask God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with your spirit, God. I can't do this by myself. And you can't, sister, or brother, you can't. So, Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the ones that are listening. I thank you for the ones that will listen. I pray a fresh wind on everybody that's listening, Father God, and will listen. Revive their spirit, their mind, their soul. People tired. You know they tired. Oh, Father God, quicken them, Father God. Let them make good choices, Father God. Let them listen to you above anybody because that's what God told me to tell y'all too. Everybody listen to men, 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 men. I'm not saying we don't give good advice. I'm not saying that we don't preach and teach good, but we are not God. I'm going to say it again. We are not God. I'm going to say it again. We are not your God. God is your God. Go to your God. And ask him to help you. Talk to him just like this. Hallelujah. He heals you. He knows everything. He loves you. He forgives you. The enemy will try to make you feel bad about what you've done or doing. And God say, just come to me. I create a clean you. I'll clean you up. I'll help you. I'll heal you. I'll deliver you. But repent. Turn back. Hallelujah. So, Father God, I pray for everyone, Father God. I pray for those that are needing a financial blessing, God, because everybody going through something. I don't care how great or how small you are, you going through something. 
Father God, touch them where they're at, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, hallelujah, I feel the power, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds, their souls, and their bodies. Oh, Father God, we need you. Move, 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 Holy Spirit. Do what you got to do through this line, through this internet. Touch them, heal them, deliver them. Hallelujah. Make them fall in love with you. Come back to your first love, God. Say, come back to your first love. Come back to your first love. You know, when you used to talk to me, when you weren't so busy. Hallelujah. 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 We all been there. I thank you, God. We give you honor. We give you praise. And I seal this prayer with the precious blood of the Lamb by saying amen, amen, and amen in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. I say this prayer will not be stopped, blocked, or hindered in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, whew. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the power of God. You know... There's an awakening happening. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. But I feel the awakening and the power of God. There's revival coming. He said the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent. Take it by force. We're about to take it by force. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This ain't a game. But you have to be full of the Holy Ghost to do that. But you got to repent. And hold on. This is daily, daily repentance. Father God, forgive me for I have sinned and thought, word, or deed, knowingly or unknowingly. Hallelujah. Uh, right. And, and I could feel some of y'all say what my shirt said. It just don't say church hurt. It say church love. Turn church hurt into church love. Don't let the devil uh, stop you from, because truth be told, we in all, when I first started, I, we all didn't say some things, did some things, come against people. You just live and learn and you do better. When you, <laughs> when you, when you truly start getting closer to God, you repent. And you start treating people better because, you know, the same gross grace and mercy that God shows you. That's what we're supposed to extend to each other. Whether we like it or not, whether we like the person or not. And I think if we can get back to just respecting and loving each other, we'll be a powerful unity. Because guess what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, ministers, preachers, teachers. If we can get that fivefold together, what a mighty blow we'll do to the kingdom of darkness. But that's the thing, to come together. Everybody's scared, scared to trust, scared to love, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, said God. And when you trust God, he, he'll show you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get up off of here. Ask God to show you who to trust. Cause just be, and that's and that's another thing. I don't know why, but I think some babes is on here because it's pulling me. Soon as you get in church, you start telling all you. I did it too. But all you tell all your business, and then when they circle right and around, you 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 church hurt. Are you mad? You did that. God didn't tell you to do that. God just said go. Do not forsake the assembling of each other. So you have to use wisdom. Pray for wisdom and discernment every day. Because this is something else. All right, you guys. Um, I just want to get up on here. Some of y'all just straight up demons. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it. I was thinking it, but I said it. Uh, I'm serious. Just talking about i activate your third third eye i rebuke you get up off my life no no i repent you need to be up on here because you need the holy ghost i wish i could just touch you just touch you because you need a touch third eye i rebuke you that's that foolishness that's that stuff that's that's sweeping the world with all that cosmic stuff i rebuke you the devil is a lie you need god you need jesus christ of nazareth he open some eyes for you. Mm -hmm. Let me get up off of here. Let me get up off of here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all know I'm, I'm real with it. I, I, I saw it in the comment. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> I'm out. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who you are. Act like it, walk like it, talk like it, be like it. General Apostle Dixon. God bless.